Hey there, econ students and teachers. You've already learned about different types of elasticity, including price elasticity of supply. This lesson is going to focus specifically on the factors that can affect how elastic or inelastic the supply of a particular good could be. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economic students and teachers. What we want to talk about in this video is why the producers of some goods might be more responsive than the producers of other goods to price changes. In other words, we'll talk about the determinants of price elasticity of supply. To do this, we'll play a game similar to that which we played when talking about the determinants of price elasticity of demand. I'm going to put two pairs of goods on the screen at a time. One will have a relatively inelastic supply and the other will have a relatively elastic supply. We're going to think about what characteristics make these goods different from each other and help explain why producers of the goods might be more or less responsive to price changes. Here's our first two goods. On the left we have corn and on the right we have corn flakes. Which of these two goods do you think producers will be more responsive to price changes to in a particular period of time, say two weeks following a price change? Within that time, which good will producers be more responsive to the price change of? Well, you might be thinking that corn has a more inelastic response among its producers than corn flakes, and you would be correct. The reason is because corn is what we call a primary commodity. Any raw material extracted directly from the earth, this includes all agricultural products, mining products, products extracted from the sea like fresh fish, or energy resources like oil, coal, natural gas, these primary commodities tend to have a relatively inelastic supply. The producers tend to be relatively unresponsive to price changes because production cannot be quickly increased or decreased in response to price changes. The resources needed to produce corn, the land, the technology, these things are very limited in supply and oftentimes very expensive. Not only that, but it takes a long time to grow corn. There's a growing season. We can't simply double our production of corn within two weeks following an increase in price. We can't even increase our production of corn by 10%, no matter how much the price goes up, because corn takes months and months to grow. So corn flakes are a manufactured good. They're one of many goods that can be produced using the raw material, the primary commodity of corn. In most cases, manufactured goods will have a relatively elastic supply compared to the raw materials that go into the production of those goods. So the price elasticity of supply for manufactured goods is going to be relatively elastic. Now just to be clear, not all manufactured goods will have a price elasticity of supply of greater than one. The point here is that a good that corn is used to manufacture, such as corn flakes, will have a much more elastic response to a price change in a particular period of time than corn. So whether a good is a primary commodity, a primary good we call them, versus a manufactured good, helps determine whether supply will be relatively elastic or inelastic. Let's move on to our next couple of goods here. Here we have two goods that are obviously manufactured goods. A smartphone on the left, and a t-shirt on the right. So which of these two goods do you think producers will be more responsive to a price change in within two weeks after a change in the price? Well, what's the difference between smartphones and t-shirts? You may be thinking that smartphones are a high-tech, a high-tech manufactured good, whereas t-shirts are relatively low-tech manufactured good. So which type of good will have a more elastic response to price changes? T-shirts and low-tech goods are going to have a more elastic response to price changes. The price elasticity of supply is going to be more elastic relative to high-tech goods. Why is that? Because high-tech goods require more advanced capital, more advanced technology, higher skilled workers, and more expensive raw materials and machines to manufacture. The price elasticity of supply is going to be less elastic than that for low-tech goods. Now, once again, let me emphasize that I'm not actually saying that the price elasticity of supply will always be less than one. Rather, what I'm trying to point out is that relative to their lower tech manufactured goods, high tech goods are going to have a less elastic response to price changes versus low tech goods. All right, moving on. Here we have two primary commodities. On the left, we have coffee beans and on the right, we have raw milk. Well, we already talked about primary commodities. Primary commodities tend to have a relatively inelastic supply. But what about when we compare two different types of primary commodities? For which of these two goods, coffee beans or raw milk, will producers be more responsive to price changes? Well, one big difference between raw milk 
and coffee is that coffee can be stored in warehouses. So the ability to store inventories for some primary commodities, such as cocoa, coffee, cotton, metals and minerals, and energy resources, these are primary commodities that can actually be stored for longer periods of time. Now, what about raw milk? Raw milk is unable to be stored. That means that in a particular period of time, such as two weeks following a price change, the supply of coffee or cocoa or cotton, metals of all sorts, and energy resources will be relatively elastic compared to that of raw milk. Raw milk will go bad after a week or two. Therefore, producers of raw milk cannot quickly increase their production in a, in a short period of time because you simply can't produce more milk cows, more dairy cows in two weeks. So the supply for milk will be relatively inelastic because of the inability to store inventories, whereas the supply of these primary commodities that can be easily stored will be relatively elastic. And of course, this again is saying relative to other primary commodities. So you have to think about whether a primary commodity can easily be stored in warehouses. This is an important determinant of price elasticity of supply, the ability to store inventories. And we're going to go on to kind of a unique example here. We're not looking at a good or service in this case. Rather, we're looking at a labor market. On the left, we have doctors. We're talking about the supply of doctors here. And on the right, we have fast food workers, the supply of fast food workers. For which type of labor, this is labor supply, are households going to be more responsive to increases in the wage rate of? Remember, the wage rate is the price of labor. So if the wage rate of doctors goes up versus fast food workers in a particular period of time, let's say two months, for which type of labor will households be more responsive to price changes? And the answer is fast food workers. Because this is a low-skilled labor, it's relatively easy for households to become fast food workers than it is to become doctors. This is a very high skilled type of labor. It takes years, up to seven or eight years to be trained to become a doctor, whereas becoming a fast food worker may only take a few days of training. So the supply of high skilled labor tends to be relatively inelastic compared to the supply of low skilled labor. So again, we're talking relative elasticities here. Okay, we have one more determinant of price elasticity of supply that we're going to talk about here. Now, if you've watched the video on the determinants of price elasticity of demand, this one's going to look awfully familiar to you. We've got cars on the left and we've got cars on the right. The difference is the amount of time following a price change. Whereas on the right, we have several months, even a year. We have the long run following a price change. For which time period will supply be more elastic in the short run or the long run and again this should sound familiar if you watch the video on the determinants of price elasticity of demand supply will be more elastic in the long run than it will be in the short run the amount of time following a price change is an important determinant of price elasticity of supply over time producers can be more responsive to price changes allowing them to allocate more resources towards the production following an increase in the price or take resources out of production following a decrease in price. We've now gone through five determinants of price elasticity of supply. Before we wrap up this video, let's review the five determinants one more time. We started by distinguishing between primary commodities and manufactured goods. Then we talked about the difference between high-tech manufactured goods, like smartphones, compared to low-tech manufactured goods, which will have a more elastic supply. We moved on then to talking about the ability to store inventories. Something like coffee is much more easily stored than something like raw milk. Therefore, in a particular period of time, producers of coffee are going to be more responsive because they can either release inventories that are currently being stored onto the market or add to their inventories if the price of coffee were to fall. We then talked about high-skilled versus low-skilled labor. In labor markets, the supply of doctors is going to be way more inelastic in a particular period of time than the supply of fast food workers. Finally, we concluded by talking about the importance of time. In all cases, when we're looking at a particular good, the supply of that good will be more elastic over time as producers have time and the, therefore the ability to adjust their output of goods to changes in price. Here we go. One step at a time.